thank you all very much. So I wanted just to kick off in terms of uh, thinking about international planning and just ask ask you about when you're when you're thinking about starting an international strategy, there are kind of three areas, I think, or maybe you can uh, contest, uh, that I think generally brands consider. They are things about delivery, uh, particularly if you're a, a retailer, you might think about delivering from the UK, and that might be an early step to branching out to uh, to international markets they are currency obviously and there are changes that you might need to make to your to your website uh, and your financial systems back ends etc in order to be able to handle handle that and then there is of course language and just from those three big areas and I know that there's culture and all sorts of other things and also um, size of the market but in terms of those sort of technical areas perhaps that affect the way that you might build a website or maybe that you, or the way that you might structure internally what of those which of those three would you put first in, in the sequence of, of expanding of expanding out I mean when, when you looked at TM Lewin did you first start with trying when you when you first started your steps of, of branching out internationally did you first start by offering international delivery to test the waters and then then start moving from there was that a, was that your route route in i think it's step by step yes uh, we have a centralized rest of the world site where okay. you can purchase from anywhere in the world and will deliver it to you um, according to the country you're from however um then taking steps to, um, we found out that taking steps to um, localize a website uh, really helps with the marketing. Yeah. Um, currency is an obvious one. Um, and there you have to be careful to um, really, I think, match your other uh, websites. I don't think your currency exchange should be honest uh, because people know that you want to build trust into that website and brand. Um, and then the last step, which we are working on right now, is a language, and we've put on quite a bit of hope into that uh, particular area and we believe it will at least double our conversion rates that's what we uh, hear from people right. from uh, localizing to um, just changing the language to a local one yeah. right that's is that based on experience of, other, of, pre, of we've been speaking localized. with a lot of people because right. we obviously have to put a sizable investment into that project Absolutely. and hire people and we our business plans are based on at least doubling that's really the conversion rate Tom, how about how about you? Is there a sequence of which you know of factors that you consider before you roll out? Or? I suppose probably the main thing for me would be delivery, um, because right. it you know if you're going to su uh, supply from the UK, there's obviously going to be a huge delivery charge, and when you're working on kind of average order values of kind of thirty thirty pounds with margins of around ten to fifteen pounds, if your delivery is four pounds of that, that cuts your cuts your margin in half. Right. So that would be a, a huge factor in terms of where we deliver from, I suppose. The other problem with that is having um, stores and stock out in places which maybe don't get enough volume to warrant having that stock in that country. Um, so it's weighing up the factors of volume versus the cost of cost of delivery, definitely. And, and presumably the, the stock that you have in different countries is going to differ and how you don't know what to stock necessarily before you perhaps start down the road of opening that, that premise is a bit chicken and egg presumably. Yeah, definitely. Right. So there's just an initial investment in a stock range which you believe is the right one um, and then an adjustment thereafter. I think it would be based on market opportunity. Yeah. So we'd look around kind of search volumes and things like that to say, right, okay, well, there's a there's a massive opportunity in, in Germany, for example, which would warrant setting up our own presence there. Whereas if we were looking to deliver to, um, say, Finland, where there is, you know, maybe not as much search volume, then that would be something that we could fulfill from, from the UK. So you're looking very much at the search volume to help mm, contribute to the strategy. Um, around, this is quite an interesting way of using search and search volumes to, to look at business strategy and, and rollouts. I suppose that gives you the um, sort of appetite in the market. Yep. Um, so that allows you to see you know, what users are doing online, um, looking at things like social media to see what they're talking about, which will help inform, you know, like you're saying, what products to stock out there. Right. Uh, but also what you know what level it's required okay that's quite a big 
big piece I would have thought to pull that all together but um, Stacey um, what what are your thoughts in terms of if I mean I know you're in a slightly different business so we've talked to a couple of retailers and there's obviously talk talk about margin and stock and delivery sure. your delivery platform is presumably is international, is international anyway, anyway, yeah, anyway right definitely uh, we it, it really depends on the product so all of our products are digital products um, so we're looking at our online TV products for example which is a, is a digital subscription the content the, the actual video content itself um, we is usually in English depending on kind of what the client is but um, if we feel that the market is strong enough we can translate that we've got um, we have an international commentary team in-house which do uh, international commentaries for all over the world so we localize live events where we can but the video on demand products are slightly different and are generally speaking in the native language of that federation so for example tennis are based in the UK so all of the tennis content is in English um, with our basketball product actually we're currently looking to grow in Europe and the strategy that we've taken for that is to understand the appetite for that sport in each country so we've identified five key territories in Europe that we are um, looking to target. The way that we will target them is localised language sites, localised pricing strategy, um, so you know people aren't at the moment we've kind of gone into those markets with a very UK centric product. Um, and although we're getting kind of an okay conversion rate, we believe that by localising the pricing and the language um, content of the site, we will be able to drive a higher conversion rate. So that's kind of the next step that we've looked into. Um, would you expect that to be double? Like, we would okay. like it to at least double, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Um, it, it, part of that consideration has also been looking into these territories and deciding which ones have a high propensity to spend online because not all markets are, are spending online although we're getting a lot of traffic from a lot of markets we recognise that actually some of them do convert better than others because of kind of challenges that, that are in those marketplaces so for example Turkey um, not being able to, to pay in um, British pound sterling because of their currency restrictions um, means that us kind of opening up into into their their own native currency, we will see you know huge volumes through that um, specific territory just from kind of unlocking that market for them. Um, so that's how we've approached for, for basketball. It's a good example. Which exposes you to the joy of the Turkish lira. Yes, <laughs> and which isn't a joy at all. No, <laughs> no, it's not something that we're that we're looking at going into lightly. Um, but it still is a, a massive market, but it's, it's a huge hugely market. expanding market. Yeah, and especially for basketball because they've got such a huge right. um, kind of following in Turkey and a, and a good propensity to spend online once you've unlocked that currency issue. I did some work for Absolute Vodka about four years ago and one of the key markets was Turkey, interestingly. The Sosluk, the social communities, really, really active in Turkey. Amazing very aspirational in nature, yuppies, <laughs> lots of them. I suppose just to pick up on the um, regulation side of things, right. that's a barrier that we face as well, especially with transporting liquids and things like that. Again, if you're looking to transport that from the UK or fulfill that through the UK, mm -hmm. then you can't use things, some liquids you can't ship via airmail. Um, so yeah, that's that that that's a, again a huge barrier. But also in the healthcare market, um, there are different regulations around different countries and what you're allowed to sell online in terms of over-the-counter drugs um, and also prescriptions and things like that. Is there's a huge difference in regulations. So again, that's a that's a big problem for for us. Does right. shelf life affect you as well? Is that a consideration? Uh, yeah, it would for for different products definitely. Yeah. How do you handle tax? Um, for example, from here, if you're selling to a U.S. customer, um, then do you bundle the tax within the delivery, or do you let the customer deal with it, or what's your solution to it? Um, at, at the minute, um, we right. have. We, are you talking about actually delivering from the U.K. or from? Well, from I'm the not US sure what facilities you have. Okay, well, we we actually deliver tax. from from the U.S., but in terms of different tax for different states, that's applied at a basket level. Okay, so your system works out every single. Um, state or country even and works out uh, which particular tax 
that needs to be applied. For the for the US, we only fulfill into into the US, so yeah, it would be on a on a state level, which yeah. is not a small system to develop or, or to keep develop. updated. Yeah. yeah, I worked for Burberry's for four years, and one particular coup that we pulled off in terms of the tax man related to doing business in the US. It, if you export from the UK into the US, it used to be this way anyway, there was a 28% duty on fashion goods. Hmm. But if you send over material already cut, and it just needs to be sewn together locally, you pay 6%. Okay. And the, profit, the effect on profitability was dramatic. Mm. I think we're raising quite a lot of different points, which I may try and return to, but I just want to bring Julia in at this point. So, obviously, Goodman's is a very, it's not a retailer, it's a, very, it's, it's a very different business, but can you talk to me about some of the considerations that you would factor in if you're thinking about rolling out to different markets? I know that maybe having property in that market is probably a big one, but... Yeah. Yeah, obviously we're not transactional, so that's, yes. that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's so easy, just actually. one or two very big yeah, ones. Yeah, it's just who is Goodman. I think that's my issue. Um, no, we, we about a year ago, I would say all of Goodman's other markets actually all started developing websites, which, yeah, from speaking from a UK perspective, we'll be quite horrified to be honest. Um, the biggest um, consideration is it was language was the the biggest. Obviously, the main the main language is English. But because we actually are, now I'm going to sound like a bank, we are global, national and local, you almost have to sort of get things right within each of those markets. And our product is in the market, so I'm not shipping property over, it's already in there. Um, but our customers um, are global, very well-known brands because we, we do big warehousing as well and distribution centres for all sort of the big the big, uh, uh, say the big retailers. So you you almost need your websites to be very global, but also extremely local. Um, <laughs> if that makes any Swear sense at all, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's quite an unusual yeah. one. Um, but at least I've got no transactions or anything. And I suppose but. that's not just from a language perspective. It's localizing it to the market trends as well. So yeah. taking into account the different. You know, um, different trends in in property and how to sell property in each of the markets. Because I imagine that's very different from it the is. US to it is it in is. Turkey, and square meters, square feet. It's even all, all the all the different measurements you use to measure a building is different across the globe as well. I mean, a, a dress shirt in the states is something completely different to a dress shirt in in the UK. So we have to yeah. obviously that's just one example, of, and I'm sure we all have plenty of those. Yeah. So, so how we also address it is we do have localised marketing teams in each right. of those countries um, that work across, obviously all online as well now. But there is that sort of kind of lack of lack of understanding in some of our markets of online business. I think that's the hardest thing for us as well because kind of from a very base level say for our football is a huge part of what perform do and a football fan is a football fan no matter where they are in the world but um, the cultures and the way that you can sell to those people is very very different so we're just doing a project at the moment where uh, I think we work with just over a hundred UK football clubs at the moment including all of the football league but we're just launching with the Norwegian football league as well across the Tip League and the Um and we've had to approach that completely differently to how we've done the, the UK football marketing. Although the, the, the football season is the same um, with some minor considerations, we've actually just gone and invested in kind of putting a localised team uh, based partly in Norway and partly in the UK because otherwise what we found was that when we were producing marketing materials and structuring the, the football club's websites, we were getting such adverse reaction to what we would usually do because the culture is so different over there. Um, that in the end we decided that the, the best strategy for us would be to actually just invest in the, the staff that understood those markets best.